death and dying in the ICU. Someone had also termed it as hospice. I thought I would talk a little bit about my experiences with end-of-life care, end-of-life decisions. I thought about th three things that every nurse should be prepared to ask their family member and their patient when talking about end-of-life care. And this conversation can happen at any point in your, in your continuum of care. Can happen at admission. Can happen at, you know, change in condition. It can happen at, you know, discharge. Ideally, this conversation should happen sooner than later, and this conversation should happen before there is an emergency of some sort or a decline in someone's condition. Because when there is an emergency or there's a decline in someone's condition, many people are their decision-making abilities are ruled by their fear and their emotions. Their judgment is not clouded, but definitely influenced by the threat of loss. Three things that I think every bedside nurse should be prepared to talk about and discuss with their family and their patients in regards to end-of-life care. Number one. Just because we can do it doesn't mean we should do it. Medicine has advanced greatly over the years. Even in just the past five years, let alone past decade or two. The interventions that are available to you and your family and your patients is limitless at this point. There are so many things that we can do to help treat medical illnesses and diagnoses that it's mind-boggling. But just because that service is available, does that mean you should do it? Will this intervention prolong someone's quality of life? Or will it just prolong their existence on this earth? There's definitely a difference. Number two, think about short and long-term outcomes and goals not just about what happens at the bedside in the hospital what happens next and the next step and the next 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 step you need to prepare your families for what is in store for them you're not only going to try and treat them and potentially save them from some sort of demise but is the family and the patient prepared for what happens in the interim? What happens in the long term? Prepared for all the complications that go along with those decisions? Where will the patient be if and when they get out of the hospital? And number three, and I save the best for last, even though this should probably be one of the very first questions you ask, what would the patient want? What would the patient want? Not what the patient needs, but what would the patient want when they were of sound mind? What were their wishes? What were their end of life wishes? And I'm making it as a generalized statement because you have to think in terms of the specificity of each patient's progress, scenario, diagnosis. So every situation is unique to that patient. But as a general rule, Everything that you do in regards to end-of-life care should be dictated and directed by whatever the patient would want. Not what the family, friends, or other care providers want. What does the patient want? Because at the end of the day, regardless of what we do for them or to them, the patient is the one who has to experience everything that we are doing for them. They're the ones that will have to go through all the tubes and the devices and the IVs and the possible surgeries and 
the time spent in the hospital, in rehab, in a skilled facility, the list is endless. At the end of the day, I don't care how you paint it, the patient is the one who has to experience this. And if the patient is not of sound mind, when this discussion happens, when this topic comes up, then those who know the patient best should be comfortable with explaining what they would want. What was their norm? Where would they want to be? How would they want to be? What kind of a life do they want to live? We spend a great deal of time as providers trying to preserve and prolong the amount of life one has instead of securing the quality of life that one wants. We need to focus more on quality and not quantity. There are a ton other topics out there and I'd love to hear what you have to say about them. Leave your comment down below. And as always, check your own pulse first.